So it's time for me to say hello and welcome all of you who are here in this very first Facebook live event that is for us in the group of international NIA teachers. And uh, I wish I could say welcome in all of the languages in the whole world, but this will do. And uh, I'm here tonight to uh, introduce the routine life to you and to speak a little bit about the inspiration, the focus, and if you have any questions on the songs, we can go over them. It is my very first live event, so I will need to keep my eyes on uh, the questions that come in and all of the names. Hey from Hamstad, hello Kathleen, hello Kelle, hello Sandy, hello Claudia, and uh, all the rest of you that keep coming on and off this live event. The inspiration for the name and uh, what the intent was to give you something that focuses on life force again. I had the pleasure to present the routine joy last the year before last and uh, to really bask in the sensation of joy of movement and all of the spirals that we danced and as the songs came to me and matured there was this pulse in me also a result from dancing all the other routines that i learned uh, in the last couple of years that the sensation of being alive. And we have something called alive already, but uh, creating a sacred livelihood and creating a sacred life and dancing through life, all of these things became so important. And also looking at how I now, after 20 years of this practice, dance my, uh, my own technique, it needed a boost, a sense of, uh, new inspiration and that can only come from me, my body, me sensing the life force that I put into the simplest of the simplest katas and steps. So there was the inspiration to call it life. And it happened when I was walking on the beach with my dog Deska. That's where it really dropped down and in. And um, then the next part came from uh, Debbie, giving me the inspiration to uh, let's focus on the learn part of the triad. Let's go back and refine the technique. Refine the technique and give every detail the attention it deserves so that we can sense the benefits that the movements do, especially when they synchronize with the music. So I got to be in the first corner of our three-stage learn process once again and now with the eyes looking at how I can choreograph the clicks that come to me in free dance. And the key movements, if you have already familiarized yourself with the routine, are the stances and uh, you probably have been practicing them. Uh, we have the closed stance with the big toe touch and the heels apart and here I am in it and then I have to figure out a way to enliven it and uh, there is a natural wave of life force coming from the roots and sometimes I call this pearl the flower of life and now the beautiful designer that uh, created the cover of the life routine chose this symbol let me see I have it here uh, the flower of life so that can be a pearl uh, if you haven't worked with the routine yet that you can add to this beautiful first movement that we do and uh, the life force in the open stance came from behind and uh, the jump rope sensation and many other things 
things that can happen when you lift the heel and pop the life force up into your body. And the next signature is the wave that really allows this life force to travel once again from the base and all the way up through the core of the body. And uh, the crafting towards the bow stance then led me to have a little wiggle and a lift up, which has been very fun to play with and uh, give it ample time to also condition the body and to make the body really groove into the famous smile line, which then gives us the big wave where we all can ride and get on our legs, much like being on a horse. And then the combinations build into sweet little fast clocks that I love doing in different tempos. And if you're into being a little bit creative with your work, to craft with tempo and numbers can be something that can enliven any of the body of works that you, that you practice with. And uh, I always suggest in the teacher feature, take it on to slower songs first. Take it on to other songs so that you can get a feeling for the movements before you actually put them on the songs that they are supposed to be on. And uh, I've done that from early on, I must admit. And now I'm also very keen to first practice it in a slower tempo, then also in a quicker tempo, and then to make it melt and meet with the chosen songs and elicit that sensation of this is body-centered choreography and I, I can feel the click uh, and uh, to use my skill with listening skills, practicing with my headphones on or uh, of course doing the bars, both with my physical structure going up and down and counting them like this and also on paper. The connection with the songs that I have are very deep and uh, if you listen to the playlist there is one song towards the end it's called What Silence Is and that song took the longest for uh, the producers to get. It was not until the very last week I had the message that this is a yes and I felt that it could le lead us uh, into that mystical place of wow, there is really something in silence that we all can hear uh, if we spend time with it. And uh, yeah, the foot patterns that emerged from that one and the invitation to be with a dancer uh, was a lot, uh, gave a lot of life force. And it's not only about me, it's also with something else. Uh, so a pearl I use in that song is sometimes, let the music dance you, like a dance partner, and uh, allow that sensation of music bringing it uh, yeah, a flavor of I am a sail and the music takes me. And uh, let's see if I can do this piece. I'm going to see if there's a question I can answer. There's a lot of hellos. Hello back to you. And uh, the video is interrupted. Well, this is the guinea pig version. I got to go first from all the choreographers. And um, let's see, do you do it without music? Yes. We have our learn, embody, and share triad that gives us all the steps. And one thing I offer in my trainings and what I do myself is also to turn the music off and practice in silence. So my only input is a visual of another body, 
that presents me the movement. Then something happens in my nervous system when I don't have to give my ears to the music and I feel less rushed and I can access a different sensation in my body when I only visually get the image or the x-ray anatomy of the person I'm learning from. Even if it's myself, I do take my own class. It's a way of staying full that I don't get um, uh, I can say emptied out by teaching too much or sharing too much. So receiving from from an image with no sound can be a step uh, that you can add on when you are doing the last uh, fine tunings of uh, of the learning process. All right, uh, the video keeps breaking off. Let's see how it goes uh, when I keep, keep talking for a few minutes. Another piece that I have enjoyed sharing with this work is that coming back to the kata in more than one place in the routine has allowed me to hear completely new feedbacks from my students. Uh, I feel more relaxed. I love it that we come back. I can go deeper and benefit more from the moves. And a lot of nice uh, feedbacks from people that have issues with their lower backs, with anything that goes on below the belly button, that the legs really come into play and have a very different way of feeding the upper body that force from behind and underneath. What you may notice as you learn the routine is that I have chosen to have very few given and chosen finger techniques and uh, my uh, gift is there that you can start adding spear fingers or power finger crossover techniques, finger flicks as you flavor the moves with your unique creativity. The spear finger technique is a great one to use when you play with the compass move and that can also help a student to get a sense of the direction in a very different way and it also creates a safety point for the elbow joint. It can have a very different feeling if you choose the finger flick technique and it can have a very different feeling if you use creepy crawlers in all of those directions. And uh, another nice thing was to craft song three in free dance style. I noticed for myself that the tendency was to put the free dance song a little bit later when the crowd is gone and we are warmed up but to have it fairly in the beginning has given a fabric of, of different kind uh, to the whole sensation of the routine itself that I'm first trained to be in the stances then in the steps that go around the sense of space and that aspect of training my own natural time sensation and then also already in the third song to have movements that I pretty much uh, guide in free dance uh, has lifted the roof of how much life force can flow through me. I don't have to wait until almost the end of the routine to be in that space of free, free thinking, free, uh, my emotions can run freely and also to run around the room and leave my parking place. That was a good one. Let's see. Same issue. Video can. So the video has reloaded. So some people that lost me have reloaded and found me again. And um, what I also can advise you to do when you start to adapt this work to other populations in, in sitting populations, 
There are many cool ways that you can play with the stances sitting down uh, and close stance and open stance and A stance and sway. There can be a bow stance like this with the hands for people that cannot be on, on their feet. And uh, you can also take many of the katas down to floor play. And I'm sure you are aware of how much creativity is available for you to be down on the floor. Uh, if you have beginning students, always use the sentences that you hear in Learn the Move DVD where Debbie speaks us through uh, all of the movements. Uh, by now I have it pretty much chipped in my system and it's almost automatic to say closed stance, big toe touch, heels apart. And even if I have my very experienced, since 20 years with me, students in the room, I love saying those uh, sentences. It grounds the work. And from that objective technical language, I then build and give them pearls, images, emotions, something that I can craft with tools from uh, blue belt or green belt. But as a white belt teacher starting, the language that is given to you is the safest one and it, it works when the student gets to know what shall I do with my toes, uh, how shall I position my heels, and uh, then any other pearl can feed into the physical sensation of that life force uh, running through the body from underneath and behind. And uh, that nurturing we can receive from the base and the nurturing that can happen when you learn to relax the toes is amazing. And I sometimes speak about the analogy of a plant, that the plant takes its nutrition from the ground, from the roots that are in the ground, uh, not by putting stuff on. And uh, perhaps that's a, an analogy for us humans. We put a lot of things on our skin and we want to cover up. But the real nutrition comes from underneath and behind and from our movement and how it is done from the inside out. And uh, the body itself, with all of the beautiful bodies, way, principles we have, if we look at the polarity and we see the yin-yang principle. The legs are closer to the earth. The arms are closer to heaven. The legs, therefore, are yin, closer to the magnetic field. And our branches that reach out have yang and the charge of the sun. And when I dance all of these stable stances with a very fine-tuned sensation that my legs have roots and they are stable but soft and give me the quality of yin. So a sturdy A stance that can be sensed as perhaps masculine and with yang energy also has a quality of softness and yin to it. So the play with that sensation, if you can, through the stances of uh, the life routine, not only feel the stability and the yang, the precision where you are in space, but also something soft inside, that there is a yin force that can guide itself up into a fluid vertical. Any aha moments for you in creating this routine? Thank you, Fred. Yes. The biggest aha is less is more. 
and I had a beautiful email a feedback from a student uh, of Nia since 20 years. It came today or yesterday. And the comment was that it used to be different. And I will say, yes, it used to be different. And uh, if I could craft something a little simpler with less uh, challenges for the neuroplasticity, not half of the routine with new neuro connections, but maybe uh, two or three new things make it a little bit simpler and it felt like the student was yearning for what I was able to give you in the life routine that we have pretty much four katas that return again and again and I can craft with it in the cycles so the aha is less is more and slowing down is a good thing let me see what happens on the side here. I don't know, toes, relaxing toes, thank you. I am interested in different recommended focuses. You can apply any of the principles of the white belt to the life routine. Joy of movement is a great one. Natural time and the movement forms. So if I'm going to focus on the 13 joints, I will say let's step in and I'll make the step in very 13 jointy. And as I get into the closed stance, I know that this is on the video, the flower of life, but I may choose to go boom 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 boom. So if I play the music, it would look very different if I'm focusing on thirteen joints. If I get to the open stance, I may. Although I know it is the wave from behind, I'll add a shoulder. to the A stance, I know this is coming up, but I may go like this and build in the 13 joints throughout the whole class. What's also beautiful is to go a little bit towards the other principles of the body to say focus on the feet, focus on the hip, focus on the spine, focus on the hands and how to put life force in the hands and choose for example three of the finger techniques and then stay a little bit impeccable and use only those three to feel the benefit of creepy crawlers, catching flies, finger flicks throughout the whole class. Hand techniques, choose pumps, touch, chop, cut, and let those three travel through the whole routine and then it will feel different. So the elegance of uh, choosing focus and intent and then if you choose to add in extra moves, not to take 18, but to take three to five so that the student and you can benefit from being with them and again less is more. And I think it's a beautiful routine to focus on anything emotional or if you want to go out for a little bit more of a mind focus and, and uh, imagine colors or things that you want to paint or to bring any pearl in that feels appropriate for the season you are in and if you're having a month-long focus with your students for example stability mobility simultaneously that can be felt also in the mind stable thoughts mobile thoughts a stability in the love a mobility in the love 
there are many ways to massage a focus through any of the routines and of course in life you see if I'm wearing the top uh, that says life so I reminded what I'm here to talk about so I'm gonna look again if there are any questions yeah, the technology seems to be the biggest challenge. Uh, many have commented that they lost the connection. And uh, what else can I give you? The intensity of the cool down. Inspired by Debbie's beautiful floor play routine, where she takes us through this journey, the body's ways journey, and gives us 13 directions to move and to lean into the floor and catch the body weight, was my absolute inspiration for the Living Babylon song, and also towards the end with uh, Lifting Your Gaze. And uh, I have successfully guided many students with replaced hips, with two knee replacements, through those planes of movements, giving them options and guiding them to sense that they can be a part of the strength exercises, as I also provide options for the more advanced students. And uh, if you are growing your teacher hat feathers, that can be a nice thing to practice for yourself. I feel one thing is to take the class and embody it for you, where you are. And then to train the muscle to be very agile on the dance floor, to keep that captain hat on and quickly also address other students' needs and uh, also assist them in how they can figure out how to make a plank position into something that they can do in a standing up posture and also to accompany them and leave the other students to do what they're doing so that they feel included in the NIA class environment so that you don't have to go to oh we have an advanced class or a softy class all are included at all times and uh, the pressing down with the toes uh, and to engage the core in that way has helped me once again to release uh, the connective tissue in the front and to feel a sense of ease and release of life force flowing from the base and I hope you can enjoy that sequence as you learn the routine. Let's see. Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, this routine really does feel different than the typical and routine. And routines typically are flooded with exercises for neuroplasticity. What is your inspiration? And how is and signature uh, translated in life? Well, I think that, thank you for the comment and uh, I'm glad that you noticed that many, many things that I do, do involve both left, right, sides, new motoric skills, and they are woven into the patterning. And that comes a little bit from my background as a kinesiologist, of course, and my NIA practice. And uh, yeah, like I described, this one just clunked in and said, here I am, and this is how it will be. And uh, I weeded out a lot of movements, I can tell you that. And uh, the inspiration to really stay on track with those patterns uh, took me to a new place. And uh, I always share, go out of the box, leave your habits, do something new. And uh, I felt that this time I, I really could peel a layer off and get to a new place of simplicity, yet complexity inside of it. And uh, thank you, all I can say is thank you for noticing, and I'd love to hear your feedback 
uh, once you worked with it for a while and of course uh, when you took it to several different kinds of focuses and, and played around with it. There will certainly be some new uh, neuroplasticity uh, along the way and uh, my vision was of course to give you something you can learn uh, not quickly to do it too quickly but in your time. Thank you. Uh, nothing moves, nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay. Yes. So there are a few comments on how to actually uh, move with the person needs to be standing up when another one is uh, lying down. I think there is a trial and error when you grow as a teacher. I am pretty quick at going, okay, so level one stay here and then level two, three, I'll just pop down very quickly and then I'll quickly come back up to accompany the person who needs more of my attention. An athletic student who sees a movement quickly they usually only need to see it once or twice. Another student needs a little longer and a little more support. And I suggest that you practice this with your teddy bears first and, uh, and then you grow that muscle. And uh, uh, be very attentive to whoever is looking twice to, to get some guidance and uh, see yourself as a guide. See yourself as a tourist guide. You want everyone to enjoy the view, but they also have the allowance to dream a little bit and be in their own space. And if it takes a little longer, that's fine also. Hmm. In my mind, it toes. Uh, okay, here's a question. In my mind, each toe has a direct relationship uh, to a part of the spine. Yes, they have. They have a direct relationship to all of the meridians, both yin and yang, and the foot, the anatomy of the foot itself, will connect to parts of the spine, like your hand also does this. So the knuckle of your index finger will correspond to the middle of the back. The knuckle of your uh, big toe will correspond to this part of the back. So if that one is not connecting when you roll through the foot, there will be a weakness in your spine. So if I'm not using my big toe when I'm walking, I will have a limited movement in my lower back and then I will have less spiral dynamic in the foot. So the inner arch and the big toe will connect to the lower back and the outside of the foot will feather and transport the weight out and up into the thorax. And then the very last joint of the toes is your neck. And then you have the other exciting uh, connections to the meridian energy as well. So feet are fantastic. Learn about them, take good care of them, do your foot baths and your uh, oil and sleep with the socks so that the oil can get in there, scrub them often, take good care, walk on different surfaces. Uh, yeah, just love them. Okay, checking in. Mm, having someone, yes. A comment from Sierre, thank you very much that it's working for her moving to heel uh, uh, technique that is sounding very delightful. Thank you so much. How I chose the music for life. Well, first I spent about 600 hours I believe in a uh, big um, secret file system called the box 
where a lot of artists have uploaded things that are licensable for NIA and it takes quite some time to go through these uh, playlists and I never know where the treasure will be and usually it takes me one to three minutes into a song to feel if this one is going to have the fabric and the transubstantiation to the playlist that I am building. And um, with this particular playlist, there was the middle song, Moon, uh, <laughs> moon Walking, and, um, and Moving Clouds. That really gave me a, a nice uh, yes. And then the very end, the very last song, I found it in some of these files that were that were hidden. <laughs> the very last song came around and it moved me to tears and it was there I knew that I am to create a routine uh, again and uh, the playfulness in the middle with the funky songs they, they were already there the only you song uh, wasn't obvious I vibed with the text of course and uh, the pearls that came along but it's also that uh, trial and error to go through all of those songs that have the artists have given um, the permission for Nia to license them and then being lucky uh, to go through them and to use my ears and my sensitivity uh, for, for the fabric of it. Is it craftable and can it be crafted for a Nia teacher from Finland all the way to, to uh, New Zealand or Brisbane that it works for the globe? It's CERN, they are saying hi to you. Yeah, well, the computer fell down, or oh, it broke down, so CERN had I'm to fix it. I'm sorry that I'm not shaved. Okay. Resources to learn about foot-spine connection. I'm very curious. Well, ask first Mama Google. And then looking at books that talk about Chinese medicine or acupuncture, a good kinesiology book will also take you far. Uh, I didn't bring any of my favorites here, but uh, that's certainly open for the next time when we are past the guinea pig uh, premiere of this uh, event hmm. okay and now I have been speaking for about 40 minutes about life in a live event some of you have uh, already worked with the routine. I also had the bars up here, but it didn't feel like it was uh, a moment to share anything about them uh, at this point. If you have the routine already, please go to the teacher feature and uh, listen to the tips I give you on how to embody and learn the moves. And take it on uh, in your time. And again, don't rush to get it as tight as it is on the DVD. The people behind me are usually black belts or trainers. They follow really well. And I'd like you to uh, give your own groups time to grow into it. And um, yeah, I feel very honored to be with you at this moment. And uh, uh, give us feedback if this was beneficial at all and uh, all I can say uh, I'll see you on the dance, dance floor and I'll see you next time. Thank you all for logging on and uh, Yeah, I'll wave now and I'll press the end button See you next time